Good morning, friends, and thank you so much for tuning in into our service this morning. Today is a special Sunday. Today we celebrate Pentecost. It is Pentecost Sunday, and we are delighted to be worshipping with you this morning. As we draw near to God, these words are for our thinking. The Spirit is here among us. The Spirit is around us. The Spirit is within us, between us. The Spirit is here to strengthen us, bringing courage, bringing our devotion and our conviction to God. The Spirit is here to move us, to make us sing and praise God. The Spirit is here. We gather in the Spirit's arms to be nurtured as we worship this morning. And may your worship fill us with the Spirit, Almighty God, as we worship. Let us draw near to God in prayer. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself. And our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Give us peace in your service. And in the world to come, the joy of seeing you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we live for you. You, Almighty God, live within us. You reign in our hearts. One God, one Spirit. Holy Spirit, we rejoice that as you come to the apostles on the day of Pentecost, so you keep on coming to us today, making yourself known in different places, but always there, constantly moving in our lives, we give you praise this morning. You come when we are most aware and sometimes when we are not aware. You bring comfort in times of sorrow. You bring courage in times of fear. You bring peace in times of trouble. And you bring hope in times of despair. Your presence is at work within us, O oh God. We remember how you worked out in the lives of the early church, prompting them, guiding them, cleansing them, invigorating them, opening doors to the gospel and raising up men and women ready to make it known through the word and deed. You come to us in quietness, persuading us to new initiatives, Naturing confidence and deepening our faith. Holy Spirit, we come with our open minds and our open hearts. Breathe upon us. Feel and stimulate us today in our worship. For all this we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forevermore. Amen. Today's reading is from the New Testament. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 13. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Let's hear the word of God. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky, which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like the tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from very, every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then they, that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Media and Elam, from Mesopotamia, 
Judea and Cappadocia, from Pontius and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles, converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia, yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, these people are drunk. Amen. Thank you very much, Erica, for that reading. Vince Havener, one of the great American evangelists, once said this, and I quote, The early church had none of the things that we think are essential for success in ministry. And yet church won multitudes to Christ and so many churches established throughout the Roman world. End of quote. He further suggests that the early church didn't have buildings, they didn't have money, they didn't have political influence, they didn't have social status, and yet they made a difference. How was this possible? The answer is this. The church had the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit was energizing the church and its ministry. They were a people who were delighted, ignited by the Spirit of God. In Acts chapter 1 verse 4, Jesus gave his disciples this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about, the gift my father promised. And so Luke tells us in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. What were they doing? The disciples were meeting together. They were praying together. They were confessing together and glorifying God together. Friends, Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after the first fruits of the harvest. This was after people had presented their gifts to God. It was referred to as the Feast of the First Fruits. Every year, the Jewish people cele celebrated this Thanksgiving Day. The Jews' name for this day was the Feast of the Weeks and was connected with the anniversary of God's giving the law to the Israelites at Mount Sinai. Therefore, the coming of the Holy Spirit on this day connects with the Jewish religious beliefs. In the New Testament, we see Jesus' death on Easter, and this presents Jesus as the perfect Passover. He was the perfect Passover lamb. His blood redeemed the people of God. He was the final and complete sacrifice, and Jesus came to bring his people freedom from slavery, from sin. Now, let's look at verse 2 to 13 as we consider together the experience of the Holy Spirit and how this is expressed through what they heard, what they saw with their eyes, and what they said. Move now, move now with me to verse 2 and notice the word suddenly. And suddenly, Luke says, a sound came from heaven. I focus on this word to drive home the point that the Holy Spirit is free and is sovereign and not bound to anyone's timing or techniques for how to get this power from the Holy Spirit. As Christians in, in the 21st century, we are to bank on his daily indwelling presence and grace. We are to walk in the obedience of this faith and pray day in, day out for the outpouring of the power of God from on high. But we cannot just assume the Spirit can come at our will, but the Spirit comes at His own will. When He comes, He comes suddenly and out of His own will. The Spirit loves and He saves His people. That's a fact. But He keeps His own hours. He knows what is best for us and when it is best for us. Next, notice with me the wind and the fire in verses 2 and 3. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. 
and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And take note, they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. You know, at times the Holy Spirit makes himself known with visible things, audible things, touchable things, and all different manifestations. In the Old Testament, if you recall, there was a pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, which signified the presence of God. If you recall with me, when Jesus was baptized, there was a dove to show the presence of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 4, the building where they were standing was shaking to show the presence of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 6, Stephen's face was like the face of an angel to show the presence of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 16, there is an earthquake to show the presence of the Spirit. At times the Spirit troops stoops to give us visible, audible, touchable demonstrations of His presence and power. I don't know about you. I often ask the question, why does God do certain things for some and not for everyone? Well, the answer is because God is sovereign. His thoughts are not a hot thoughts, and we cannot put God in a box. And before we get excited to think otherwise, God is not fire, He is not wind, He is not a dove, He is not a warm glow. So God doesn't use these manifestations in a way that allows us to confuse Him with them. God is free. But when He pleases, there may be fire and there may be sound. The, the Holy Spirit is that wind which renews our hearts and our minds to do more for God. The Holy Spirit regenerates us, brings us to new birth and conversion to Christ. The wind fills the entire house. It is automatically recognized as coming from God and not only that, but out of heaven. Friends, when the Holy Spirit of God comes, you will feel the Holy Spirit and you will know that the Holy Spirit is present. Next, we see the tongues of fire. They came and rested upon the apostles. This visual sign gives testimony to the audible experience of the invisible wind. Fire speaks of the presence of the living God. And throughout redemptive history, God had at times appeared to men in the form of fire or burning glory. We could look at the examples of the burning bush, for instance. The pillar of the fire leading his people in the wilderness, you might recall that. The fire, the wind and the lightning that accompanied the giving of the Ten Commandments and the Sinai experience. The Holy Spirit is seen and heard. He is seen as fire or glory and he is heard as the mighty rushing wind. Fire speaks of the presence of the living God. The fire, as I have already said, is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. The incident with Moses and the burning bush is a good reminder in the Old Testament. The bush was on fire but not consumed. As a church, we are called to be on fire, but not consumed. You know, the Church of Scotland since 1691 has, has stood on this principle and logo with the Latin words, Nectamen consumer batua, burning, but not consumed. It seems that what is taking place is the fire that is symbolic of God's presence with his people is now divided and comes to rest above each man and woman as the Lord allowed. And this is amazing, friends. This is showing that from now on, from that time on, the Holy Spirit was to dwell in the lives of individuals. Each and every individual believer who believed in God would receive this gift. Amazing. Look with me again in verse 4. We read, They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk 
in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Being filled with the Holy Spirit here is being overwhelmed with the greatness of God. They began to proclaim the wonders of God. What makes this event the birth of the church? The church is this. As soon as they received the power, they began to be witnesses of Christ to the world. Their mouths were opened and they began to speak simple languages which could be heard by people around them. I like details given by Luke. Luke says nothing about feelings in this particular passage. But we are told that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. So they spoke not about weather or about their children or about their jobs, but about the mighty works of God. They praised God for the wonderful things God had done. And under the control of the Spirit of God, they spoke about Christ. Many people were attracted by this miracle. Some were baffled, some bewildered, some were confused. The crowd could not believe how unwise Galileans could speak so well. They wanted to find out what was going on. So just as Moses drew near the bush that was burning but not consumed, the great multitude of people from many different countries came and they wanted to find out. The crowd wanted to know what was going on. Some mocked, mocked them. They were reasoning quite rationally but wrongly that these were drunk but not with sweet wine. In essence, these disciples were drunk but not with sweet wine. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Even today, friends, people mock this type of supernatural phenomena. They cannot understand how people could speak in other tongues. Even theologians are embarrassed about it and some don't believe it. So the people came, but they could not explain what was going on. At this assembled multitude, Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, proclaimed the gospel. He declared that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be served. I'm sure most of us are tired of this lockdown. We could be stressed and feeling insecure. Perhaps some of us are confused by what God is doing and what God is not doing during this time. Two days ago, my son was complaining of stomach pains. I offered to pray for him. My son responded, Daddy, please don't bother. We have been praying for coronavirus to go away and nothing has changed. Surely God can't heal me. I didn't know how to answer him. Friends, the Holy Spirit is at work. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29, God is described like this. Our God is a consuming fire. Our God wants Christians in lockdown who are on fire for Jesus. May we be kindled by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Our fuel will be the word of God and prayer. What if God can revive us right now when we can't even meet with more than one family? Friends, this week, could we see that God keeps his promises and he works through people in ways far beyond their own ability or understanding? He still does wonders today. God can use you today if you believe and obey God can use you. Will you believe? Will you trust God when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you? I would like to close with the words from a hymn, from one of our own hymn books, CH4 595. O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us, revive your church with life and power. O oh, breath of life, come and cleanse, renew us, and feed our church to meet this hour. O oh, wind of God, come bend us, break us, 
till humbly we confess our need. Then in your tenderness, remake us, revive us, restore us. For this we plead in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us all pray. O oh God who always listens to us, the God who breathes new life into us, the God who calls us forward to resurrection. We are surrounded by a world of dry bones. With the coronavirus virus ravaging our nations, we pray for this world in need of your spirit. Lord, come now and rescue us. We pray for those who make big sacrifices and small sacrifices. Please, Lord, be with us. O oh God, who always listens to us, who breathes new life into us, call us forward to resurrection. We are surrounded by people with dried up lives, people unable to see your life past their tears. We pray for this world in need of your healing. Be with us, O oh Lord. Your power is beyond compare. Your glory is beyond our understanding. Your mercy is boundless and your love for us is impossible to comprehend. Lord, look on us and on this church in your compassion. Holy Spirit, you changed the lives of the apostles and of countless people through history. Just as you are changing our lives in turn, please renew our hearts. Come now, change our world in all its need, so that it may enjoy hope and peace as you come on Pentecost. Come again now, Lord. All this we pray for and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, may the love of God create in you new life. May the power of God transform your old habits into new hope. And may the Spirit of God grant you wisdom and vision, embolden you to proclaim the good news of God's love to all. May the blessing of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all, now and evermore. Amen.